Hey guys, give me a five for five and we'll roll, okay? Um, I know, hey Buckeye Jim, good to see you. I know I'm back pretty quick here, but uh, I told you guys I probably would be. I don't like streaming this close to one another because a lot of times people will skip over it. Um, so please go back and watch my previous live stream to get details on what I talked about there. I did talk in depth about the x flare itself so uh yeah are we five for five guys okay cool cool thank you um and again i'm probably not going to get a whole lot of people in here at this hour but it is what it is and i'm not really concerned about that until i want people to see this this could uh this is this could uh we see, could see some significant stuff here some things have happened that i wasn't expecting um, and so let me, uh, just go over some of that with you first, but I'm going to start this and let you guys watch that. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to slow it down for you. This is the CME that was produced by the X flare. Okay. This thing is large. This is not a baby. This is not, in my opinion, I don't think grid down stuff, okay? Uh, but I do think that if what I'm looking at is, uh, well, you can see it. I do think we could see some regional issues, some local issues as far as uh, electrical stuff, maybe. Um, and I'm saying that for a whole host of reasons. I don't say that lightly, guys. You guys know that I don't typically even go that far with it, which is why I waited earlier. I really had a gut feeling that something like this was coming from that X flare. Um, so I was trying to, you know, show some patience and some restraint from the excitement that I had. Um, and it, and it is that it's excitement. I am not scared. There's no fear here, guys. I'm not saying you're going to wake up tomorrow and you're, or you're going to get woke up in the middle of the night with no electricity. I'm not saying that at all. Okay. Cause I don't think that that's going to happen. But what I will say is that I'm still a couple models I'm waiting to come, you know, get updated. And that would be the CME trackers uh, from NASA. You got the, the CME tracker from over there. And then we do have the CME tracker from NOAA. I'm not sure how much they're watching. I would assume they're watching this pretty close. And the reason why is for the, whole, the reason I just said. We're getting things, things are happening right now that I didn't expect. This happened so directly in front of Earth. Um, you guys know I talk about radiation storms, right? So let's start right there first. Because I think it's important to understand. 
So I'm going to put this up here and I'm going to show you the event and I'm going to run it down in the timeline for you. Okay. So when I came, when I got on here earlier, well, before I started my stream, um, I had noticed this flare here. Now it got close to being a uh, R2. It might have even been an R2. I can't remember. Radio blackout. Okay. So that's x ray production. When it gets to, I think it's M5 or 6, um, that's when R2 starts, radio blackout conditions. But then we also, you know, then then the X flare happened. Okay. Um, hold on a second, guys. I, my ears started bleeding. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What the heck? It's bleeding so bad it's dripping. Wow. What the heck is going on with that? Anyway, um, so as I'm looking at this, and then the X, like I said, the XR happened, and I showed you guys it was kind of impulsive, but at the same time it was uh, taking a while, long duration. I mean, it shot straight up, right? That's that's the impulsive part of it, and then you know we see ones like these over here, up and down. That's very impulsive, and all you get from that is just the x-rays. There is no CME, but that typically, typically you're not going to see because of no CME, uh, radiation storm. But we also had another flare after this one. Now, to my surprise, when I was looking at this stuff again, I wasn't even paying much attention down here, geomagnetic activity. So I, I popped over here and I seen that said G1. And I'm like, where did that come from? That's a geomagnetic storm. Anything we get from this X flare should not be hitting us yet. So my assumption here, and it still is my belief, and I can't say 100% on this, that came from something else. And I do think I know where it came from, and I'll show it to you. Go back here on the 17th. No, not 17th, but um, I believe it was the 19th. That's Stereo A. Wrong satellite. Sorry, guys. That was that's This satellite is a million miles closer to the sun. It's from our perspective. I'm just going to leave it at that. All right. Um, please share this out, by the way, guys. This is in such a, a weird hour. And I stream pretty close together. And a lot of times... YouTube won't send out the, the notifications when that happens because they don't want people starting live stream after live stream after live stream and sending out all those notifications because then it starts to bug people, right? So, yeah. So, if... Uh, are you guys still 5 for 5 in there? Again, guys, I don't expect a whole lot of chatter. I get it. Um... Somebody let me know, though. I do need to know if we're 5 for 5 in there. Can you guys still hear me? Shalom. Hello, chat. Anything? Type anything for me. What the heck is going on here? Okay. All right. There we go. Thank you. Hey, JJ. Okay, cool. Just, I just want to make sure. I don't, you know, like I said, this is going to be one of those things that is probably not going to get a whole lot of views right now. Um, but the only way we can beat that is to, you know, share it out. So if you would, please do that for me. But Brisbane, heck yeah. You you took some of the uh, big old x flare x-rays, radio blackout conditions over in Australia. And I'm assuming it's Brisbane, Australia. Hi, Diana. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so anyway, we look at this, we do see another eruption. That one right there, um, and there was kind of a little bit of a halo with that. It wasn't big, big time anything. But we could take a glancing blow from that, but I still, I'm not sold on that yet. I don't really, let's look at the 19th, maybe... Uh, we just did, didn't we? Duh, wages. Go back one more day. 
And that was a little bit of a, but I think that one went off the backside if I remember right. Regardless, there was something there that looked like it could be impacting Earth. But again, I, I can't say that for certain right now. Um, and that was days ago. And we're, we're talking specifically, why did we get a geomagnetic storm? If you look over here, Noah's forecasting one, one and a half on the KP. That's down here, guys. Where did this come from? We already got the one we were expecting back here. So I don't know if this is related at all. All I can tell you is currently we are now back up in because we dropped out of storm level. We're now look at latest observed. We're back into G1 storm level. Something's hanging around here. And we have a radiation storm. I know where that came from. That came from the X flare. Okay? That did. That sent the protons out. Along with, I was waiting to see if it produced a CME because nothing was updating. And that's why I waited. And then when I seen what I just showed you guys over here on uh, Seeds, When I seen that, I knew that that's CME, and yeah, it produced a full halo. <laughs> I mean, that's a big halo, too. That's that's impressive, in my opinion. So what I'm, I'm going to slow this down and show you guys exactly how fast this is uh, going here, because you're looking at 12-minute intervals each time this takes an image. So we got 10 images. So in 100 and... Let's see here, 10 minute images, 120 minutes... In a couple hours, in two hours, this thing is, the the, the front of it has left the screen. <laughs> okay? So what I'm saying is that this seems to be a little bit faster mover, which we would expect that with an x -flare. Okay? This is something we would expect. But I can't really give you a good speed on that yet. Um, I just, I can go look at the data and, and start looking at that, but I, I've seen some all over the board type of speeds on that when I was looking. So I'm not willing to come out here and just say, hey, this is moving at breakneck speed, or hey, this isn't moving fast at all, any of that. I'm just going to reserve on that part of it right now. But if it is moving faster, it will give us a harder hit. But what I will say is that 100%, this radiation storm is from this x flare. And like I said a minute ago, and I kind of went off a little bit there, um, when we look at these things, when we talk about radiation storms, we talk about the ones that usually fire over here, right? Now, the ones in front do the same thing, right? It crosses our magnetic connection line to the sun. It couples with it. The protons do, okay? Um, at least when you're talking about radiation. So when that's happening, that can happen from a straightforward blast. It does not have to happen over here because our, our connection line to the sun is over here. So when you get a CME that isn't directed at Earth, but actually blows off this way, and even it can blow off the back, any protons, our magnetic connection line is going to grab it, and it'll move it towards our planet. So we oftentimes think, well, you know, if it happens over here, we really ain't got much to worry about when it comes to radiation storms. Yes, you do. You have just as much to worry about or pay attention to. I don't like to use that word worry. Um, but the protons are coming. They're here. Okay? Um, and that's what I'll say about that. So, now, when we go here and we look at this, it's right in the front. There is no doubt. No diggity, no doubt. Ain't that how the song goes? Pretty sure, right? Like to back it up. <laughs> anyway, so I'm using the 94 here to show you the flares again because, and another thing, I guess all I'll do here first, I do want to show you up here. This is the 304. Let's see if we've got updated imaging. Okay. That did produce that Canyon of Fire effect. And this is one of the best visuals I've ever seen of it. Okay. And let me explain to you why. Let me zoom in. Because of our perspective, okay, because of the way we're able to see this from this angle, we get to actually see it kind of just kind of peel back right in the middle. It's uh, it's 
pretty cool, actually. So we're going to be looking here because that's where that x popped off, and you'll be able to see it immediately. It's not a question. Okay, you guys seeing that? Right through here. And then look what happens. See those those arches? Look at that. I mean, it looks like a big canyon. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I'm talking about when we talk about a canyon of fire on the sun. Um, it is not fire. I'm not going to get into all that, What all exactly what that is. They use that verbiage because that's what it looks like. Um, so, you know, and it's nothing more than that. Uh Oftentimes, things, when we see things like this, they do get named kind of, uh, well, excitedly, I guess. So, if you keep moving that, you see how it's just hanging in there right there? I'm going to back it up. We're going to watch the eruption again. So, here we go. See that open up? Look at that. I mean, just like peeled back. That's amazing to me. <laughs> I just think it's really cool. So I, you know, oh, and by the way, guys, anybody who uh, was a, uh, became a member tonight in my previous late live stream, thank you. Hey, Hilly, thanks, buddy, for being a member and being a good friend for years now, man. Um, I do appreciate you. I really do. Uh, but anyway, thank you, guys. I got, like, uh, Deep Quake was, and 5G was gifted memberships i got offline i think there were 85 memberships last night close to it anyway and i'll be putting the names up but uh thank you guys for all that i mean hopefully we can continue to grow i'm i'm able to add more emojis now too because that happened so anyway you got this this right here now again guys i'm not going to sit here and waste your guys' time and be like well this could happen that could happen i'm not going to forecast anything Okay, you guys know I don't do that. I'm going to now cast, and I might give you guys a day or two out in front what I think might happen. That's just an opinion, even at that, okay? But we're going to have to deal with this corona hole. Okay, I'm going to update that. This is the 211. Now, these are coming from SDO. It's the one satellite. It's from our perspective also. It ju it's just hanging around in geosynchronistic orbit, which means it orbits the earth but it stays over the same part of earth at all times and it rotates to keep its eye on the sun okay so it's orbiting in us at 15 degrees an hour and it but it rotates to keep its eye on the sun like the big lord of the rings eye so yeah but that being said that's that's the perspective again it's as if you went outside and looked up okay it really is and I'm not going to go too much more in explanation on that. But watch what happens here on the 211. This is one of those things I showed you guys uh, in the last stream, right close to the end, where I was showing you how it peeled back the atmosphere. Okay? So let me click on that. Right there. See that? Now, I still do think, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stress this right now, that the brunt of this, okay, is going north. Okay, the the middle of this CME, if you want to use that verbiage, the most intense part is going north of Earth, okay? But watch how this happens. Wham, see how fast that happens, number one. You can see the corona get disrupted all the way down to here. Okay, so when that's happening, I, I, I really did think there was going to be at least an Earth-directed component to this. Um, and again, I don't think it's, a, you know, like right, right on us. But I'm, I'm timid to say, you know, glancing blow at this point even. Um, I'm timid to say maybe a side blow. They're, they're different, right? A glancing blow means it just barely touches you. And not, sometimes not even that. Sometimes the magnetic weight of that CME can hit your magnetic field, okay? Um, but I think it's going to fall somewhere in the middle. And, and what I'm saying is it's either going to be like, I don't know, because you can clearly tell, guys, look. Look where the brunt of this is. See the brightness of it? It's all 
equatorial regions of the sun and north. We see the little shadow down here, right? That little distortion in the imaging. That's the halo effect, right? But you can clearly see that the majority of this is still going north. Okay? Um, and that's confirmed by looking at this. This is on the north part of the sun. Now, it can still fire in a southerly direction from right here. But gauging by what this did earlier, and let me show you that. It's from the same sunspot. Okay? It went north. So, whatever is causing this thing to do what it's doing is influencing it in a, in a way where it, when it erupts, it does send a lot of it north, north, uh, northbound. Okay? We didn't get a chance to see it. I'm going to have to go back further. Sorry. I hate it when that happens. So, let me, uh, we'll just do this. Okay. And we'll, we'll look at something else while that's loading. Okay? Um, I do want to show you. This is the 131. And, and again, I didn't show a whole lot of this one in my last one. I feel like I show you guys the 131 a lot. Because it does give you guys a good detailed view. Um, because you don't see a whole lot of the corona, but you see some of it, and it shows the sunspots really well. So, you know, I, it's not my favorite view, but it does make for good thumbnails and things like that. Plus, it lets us see certain things, because the flare will show up on here, obviously. See? And what I'm saying here, guys, not only is this one flaring, this one down here did too. Okay? And it's, they're both right in front of us. You couldn't get any, like, more in front of us. And you, did you see that? That was that other flare. This one. Okay? So this is all happening right in front of us. With that being said, if you look here on the proton flux, it is still moving upward. What that tells me is it hasn't leveled off. It tried to right here, but I think what happened... When that second flare fired off, it put some more protons out there. And I think all that involved is causing the radiation level just to spike. Now, all that, this could happen just simply from the X flare, right? But we're not just talking about an X flare here. Okay, we're talking about another uh, decent sized M flare afterwards. Now, that's a data dropout, in case people are wondering. Again, it's because of the positioning of the satellites. They can't get the information back, okay? It's about sending the data here, there, and everywhere, right? But anybody anybody just now coming in here, please share this out. I, I, I'm streaming too close together, and I knew I was when I came on anyway, but I want to get this to you. I haven't been to bed yet. I'm getting tired, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to stay awake. So I didn't want to, like, not report on this to you guys. Um, because I told you I was going to come back anyway, right? But I I, did, I wanted to get this to you and let you guys see, hey, we got a radiation storm. Hey, we got an unexpected geomagnetic storm that is still ongoing. Well, I guess it looks like we popped out of that right there. That's the latest observed, right? Now, there are uh, there is another place we can go to look at the uh, geomagnetic activity, okay? These are 30-minute increments, okay? It's the same data point as this. These are three-hour averages. But over here on the German site, they give you a 30-minute average. So you get more closer to real time. Not more closer. You get closer to real time. <laughs> hey, hey, Linda. Hey, Diller. Oh, cool. I like the menorah there. It's pretty neat. Anyway, um, so, yeah, we almost got to a G2. Okay? Now, the G1s, you're not going to see anything but uptick in aurora, seismic activity, will increase, all that stuff, right? Um, but as far as, like, grid issues and things like that, most likely not. Now, don't forget, our magnetic field is weakening. I say that a lot. Sometimes I feel like I say it too much. 
but it is the truth. Data shows it's roughly about 25% down than what it was. Um, and it's continually to weaken. It looks like the weakening has slowed a little bit when I looked at the data the last time. Um, but it's still moving that direction, okay? Um, it's not getting stronger. It hasn't leveled off. It's still decreasing. There was a recent uh, article written about that, too, a research paper. It's peer-reviewed and stuff. Um, it, it's a it's a pretty cool uh, thing to read if you can get past all the boring word salad. And even all the professors and stuff will tell you that. It's all boring word salad. A lot of it is. People like us, the layman, right? We can't, uh, you know, we have to understand what we're looking at and reading or it's really, really boring. So when they use words that we're not used to, quote unquote, bigger words. <laughs> I mean, I understand them. I know what they mean. I'm not going to come out here and use those words to you guys. It would just be counterproductive. Um, it just would. Now, there are instances that things are just called what they are and you have to explain them, right? A lot of those actually. But Tamitha Scope does a good job with that, too. I know I mention her a lot, but I really do think she does a great job of walking that line between way too much word salad and helping people understand, right? Because there's a difference, if you guys know what I'm saying here. <laughs> but this flare is that. So it wasn't from the same sunspot. And this is what I was mentioning earlier. When that stuff gets destabilized, and what's unique about this situation, and it's happened before, we got two big sunspots directly facing Earth on roughly close to the same longitudinal uh, regions on the sun, right in the middle, right there in the meridian. Look at that. I mean, it's right there in the middle. <laughs> but also, we have to understand that any CMEs produced will also be affected by these coronal holes as far as direction and that's what makes it so hard to forecast because magnetic polarity and other things are involved these things can pull things one direction or the other it really can it can benefit you sometimes and not so much the next time so you know it's just something we have to be aware of when you start seeing corona holes and it happens often guys okay it's not it's not something new i'm not saying anything new here it's just something that happens so that flare there, that was that end flare. And again, you've seen how that was kind of a, I mean, it really was intense. I will say that. Now here on the 94, we're going to be able to see the flare that happened uh, yesterday. See that one? Okay. Boom. Look what happened when that one did that. It was communicating with this one. Still, it, it, it disrupted this area. Then. Okay, now the bottom one started flaring. It's like they're taking turns here, and then another big one. And then you see this. It, it's just a, it's like a pinball machine or a tennis match. And don't forget, check this out. Okay, that's rotating towards Earth. We got X-ray from that. Okay, hey, thank you, Callie. I appreciate that. Really do. Good morning, Sherry. How you how you doing? Okay, so, yeah, I mean, you can clearly see everything is being disrupted at the same time or close to it. In other words, it's a domino effect. When something happens, that energy transfers, it disrupts other areas magnetically, and here we go. Boom, right? Oh, cool. <laughs> That's your first ever uh, super chat? That's neat. That's cool, Callie. Thank you. Appreciate you. I didn't even know it would say that. I'm not sure if anybody's seen that. It says, let's celebrate their first super on a live stream. That's cool. Thank you. Honored to be your first one there. Pretty cool. Thank you. Okay. So, with that being said, guys, we're just going to have to watch the models. That's all we can do. We can't do much of anything else. All I can do is show you what's happening. Okay. Um, and I do think that this definitely has an Earth-directed component. This is a big eruption. It's taken up almost the whole screen. And I was really hoping that the NASA and the NOAA CME tracker models were up. Um, if you guys go over to uh, the Carrington app on, on your Play Store and download it, um, 
he does a really good job with that. You'll be able to get notifications and stuff when things like this happen. And it's got a lot of good visuals. He shows you a lot of the imaging I did. Um, plus different ones. So it's just a really cool app. It's it's easily navigated, all of that. It's just it's simple to use, and it gives you the information you need. And it's a pretty cool visualization at the same time. I just think he does a really good job. I get nothing from that, okay? I'm not... <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm saying that because I genuinely genuinely feel that way but this is the nasa model guys and you can tell it's not showing that at all the last one that the nasa model showed was one that uh happened over well you can see it right there watch right here right there see that it's not going it's not coming at us i mean why would i i mean it's little that one but anyway these guys go home on the weekends too okay just so you guys know so we may not get unless it is a big big eruption which this is but if they think the majority of it's going to miss they may wait to do this i don't know uh, i don't think they're going to wait on this one i do think they'll probably update this fairly quickly once they think they've got a good handle on what direction it's going how fast it's moving all of that because it would be kind of irresponsible to just throw it out there as soon as you see it right and again that's why i wait <laughs> Because I've done that in the past, and I've gotten I've burnt myself too many times with that, and I refuse to do it anymore. But not to mention, I shouldn't do that. I should wait. We got time. This it's not going to hit us this second, okay? If it's if there's ever a time where I can't, where I don't think that I can have some patience on something, you're probably not going to see me at all because it's probably already happened. So that's just what I'll say. Hey, holding it down in the Bronx, baby. But I do think, you know, you look at all this, and I also want to bring something else up. I, remember I showed you uh, this flare over here, right? I want everybody to remember that, too, because some of this could be that. Because it is blowing that direction. That part would be going off the side. It even almost looks like it might be, because it looks like it has its own little core here. So it, that very well could be what's going on the left side here. But that wouldn't, and I guess it could be, Nah, probably not down here on the bottom. But it does look like this thing has an Earth-directed component of some sort. Unless we've had a big eruption on the backside that we can't see. But judging by this, we don't have Stereo A anymore, guys. Not on the side. So we don't get a side view. It just makes it real difficult. And, that, and again, that's, why, that's when we have to exercise extra patience. Um, don't be just trying to jump out here. You know, anytime I jump out here, I tell you guys why. A lot of times it has to do with, well, I'm not going to be home, so I want to at least get you guys the information. So, that's what I'll say. Now, again, guys, this is a significant flare. The CME is significant. The radiation storm really wasn't a surprise, but I was not expecting it. Um, because I just wasn't clear on how, uh, what direction, the, if it even produced a very, very large CME. So that's why I didn't really say much about, I mentioned it, about the radiation storm, possibly. But what I do want us to understand is that this is still moving up, guys. Sometimes it takes a minute for it really to get there. And where do we gauge that at? Check this out, right here. You guys go back and look at my last live stream, or if you were here during my last live stream, it did not look like this, did it? I even mentioned it, I even said it. I said when we get a when you get a flare, you get the bullseye, right? So let me start this model run. And what you're looking at is proton flux, okay? Well, it, this is the it's X-ray flux, I'm sorry. Um so that's that right there is your X flare. Okay. Australia got blasted with that. And over here, where all the bad stuff is happening, as far as extracurricular pew pews and boom booms right um but anyway you see it fade off and then it's going to come back watch that is the delay that you're going to see from a flare here because the flare gets here in about eight minutes it moves at the speed of light right but the protons do not okay let's make that clear so you get your flare, and then if we're going to get a radiation storm from that flare, 
It's going to come just a few minutes later, a couple hours typically. And guess what? There they are. That's what happened. So, you know, it filters in on the poles. That's what's happening. So we're getting a radiation storm. And again, guys, I've shown you a, a few radiation storms as of late because we've had them, right? Now, with the geomagnetic activity spiking, I'll tell you what, one, one more model I can show you here. I do want to show you um, is this it? Nope. Where is that at? Geoelectric field. There it is. Okay. This is the geoelectric field. It's a, it's the electric field at the surface. Geoelectric field at the surface of, of our of our planet, right? And this typically will react when you're getting geomagnetism. We're talking about electric here on this model, right? And they use this to build things and try to forecast better for earthquakes. There is a relationship between seismic activity and space weather. They're starting to understand this more and more. And they're able to incorporate the data now more accurately in their models. And that's what they're trying to do here. You see how that's spiking? Where's it spiking at? It's spiking on the North Pole, right? Coming in from the north, which is exactly what you would expect. Okay, so that is moving. And we can go look at the, um, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. In honor of our Australian brothers and sisters, they got hit with the X flare earlier. Let's let's use their model. This is the magnetosphere. Okay. So that this model here is the same one as giving you the same data as this. Okay. So let's go down here and look. Yeah, we got a lot of magnetism hanging around here this is the density right here we'll just sh i'll show you this one i'll pause it but you can see how we're getting hit boom, 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 boom. right so that is your geomagnetic storm right now this is that model for, from the australia model and this is the bow shock this is where the satellites hang out okay so if we take it back to the 22nd, you're going to see it bouncing around. We get what's called compression and then rapid expansion. When we get hit from stuff, you know, you see it bouncing like a rubber band there. That's what happens. We get rung like a tuning fork. Okay. And be, depending on our polarity, as far as the magnetic field is, um, when we're in a negative six position, which is what I talk about all the time, that's called the BZ. We couple with all this stuff, negative six or, or further or further more negative, right? And the more negative we go, the more we couple. So when we couple like that, because of the positioning of everything, it allows everything in. Not everything, but a lot more in, okay? We don't deflect things as easy. When it's in a positive, we might not even have seen a geomagnetic storm with this one if we were in the positive. We were never in the positive, and I know that for sure because the data. Okay, here's your data right here. This is the solar wind data. Okay, we went negative six and stayed there for a few hours. That's why it's showing up in purple here. The red line is that uh, magnetic polarity. Okay, it's called the BZ. And this is normal too. You see how we kind of started fading off here and went back close to neutral? So this was kind of short-lived. I don't know what caused it. It could be the phi angle flip, but we started going negative before that. Okay. I do note, though, that we did see something right here because everything moved. Okay. And then shortly thereafter, the phi angle, well, no, the phi angle right here, look right here. It flipped right when that hit. So I don't know what exactly happened here. And then it flipped back, and, that, and we were at negative six here. So. You know, you can kind of follow that. Does it really matter? Yeah, it matters so we understand next time. But for this time, it's it's history now. It's already been here and gone, right? So we're just going to learn from that. That's what we got to try to do. So when I start seeing these things, it helps me to understand, hey, I need to look for this, that, or the other. 
And my hope is that you guys do the same thing for yourself and really go check this stuff out on your own. After I show it to you, all the links are in the bottom. I mean, I show it to you guys all the time. But again, guys, shout out to my Aussies. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Okay. I'm not going to go any further with this, guys. This is just what it is. Okay? Um, if I had more to show you, I would. But that is all we've got going on right now, which is a lot. So, if anything else happens, and let me say this too, real quick. Because I do want to point out that I do think that we're probably going to see the radiation continue to tick up a little bit. I'm not sure if we're going to get to an S2. Regardless, an S1 radiation storm, you have nothing to worry about. It will tell you that in the models. Okay? It cannot affect you. The only, only thing it can affect is people that fly high latitudes and high altitudes. Okay, the rest of that is supposed to get absorbed. Now, we start talking about G2, then yeah, sometimes it can affect us, uh, but not in a bad way, majorly anyway. But again, like a thunderstorm warning system, thunderstorm watch, tornado watch, or yeah, thunderstorm watch, tornado watch, thunderstorm warning, tornado warning. Uh, now they got the new ones, which is a uh, tornado, particularly dangerous situation tornado, and you have a tornado emergency. So you see all the upscale things there too. Same thing is going on with space weather here. All of these. Okay. So hopefully you guys understand that part of it. I know you guys do. Um, there might be some other channel creators out there that might think you're so whatever and not want to give you guys credit for having common sense, you know. But there are no bad questions here either. You got a question, you ask it. Nobody will ever judge you here. I promise. If they do, they will no longer be here. Hey, Kim Powell, good to see you. So, I'm going to go ahead and pop off here, guys. I don't have much more. Um, again, I'll probably give you guys another update later on. Please go back and watch the previous live stream. I went way more in depth talking about the flare itself. I talked more about the other things involved with the flare this time. So, hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks, everybody, for the super chats. Thanks for all the... The support you guys have been given. Thanks for all the new memberships. Linda, good to see you. Kim Possible, Brian, MZ, Zach, Andonius, Deep Quake, Paul Deep Quake, gifted like 35 memberships last night. I, I mean, it just it threw me back. <laughs> I'm just so humbled, and I get embarrassed when that happens. And But thank you. And my family thanks you because, you, yeah, I'm not going to go there. Um, just know that it's, it's helping me. Okay, guys. And I'm just going to leave it at that. So anyway, guys, I'll see you guys again later on today. I will be doing another stream later on tonight. If not today, early on, it'll be later on tonight. So God bless. Yahusha saves and, uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.